Atmospheric pressure is an odd thing. We're constantly living within it, but it's very hard to comprehend how strong it really is. For example, there is over 30 kilograms of air stacked above this Rubik's Cube, exerting nearly 300 newtons of force on each of its faces. One of the easiest ways to experience the strength of the atmosphere is by using a syringe. And by pushing the piston all the way to the end, squeezing all the air out and sealing off the end, we can pull the piston back and create a vacuum, essentially fighting the atmospheric pressure. Now, I've previously built a car that's powered by this atmospheric springing force, and this car translated this large amount of force over a short distance to a much smaller force over a longer distance. So even though the piston is only pulled back about 13 centimeters, the car could travel a total distance of 190 meters. Now, I also know that the pistons of these syringes want to contract very quickly, as I've used this to build syringe rockets in the past. So how about we harness this rapid contraction of the piston into a small car, and build a vacuum powered dragster. This video is sponsored by KiwiCo, more about them later. There are two important dimensions to this syringe that will determine the design of the dragster. The first is the diameter of the piston, as this is what the atmosphere will be pushing against. The larger the diameter means the more piston area, therefore the larger the force produced by the atmospheric pressure. The second important dimension is the syringe length, as this determines how far the car will travel. If I were to connect this piston directly to the rear wheels, there will be a huge amount of torque for a very short distance, assuming the wheels don't just spin out from lack of grip. So we need to convert some of this torque into increasing the range, using the mechanical advantage of a belt and pulley system. Starting with a thin axle attached to a large pulley, the forward force of the piston is transferred to a rotational torque at the belt. This then drives a much smaller pulley which is integrated into the rear axle, resulting in a pulley ratio of one to three. So every time the large pulley rotates once, the rear axle will rotate three times, but with less torque. Taking the diameter of the initial shaft and the rear wheels into consideration, the overall ratio of piston travel distance to theoretical car travel distance is 1 to 26, meaning for every centimeter that the piston moves forwards, the car should move forwards 26 centimeters. With a pair of radio controlled car wheels attached, the ratio of wheel rotations to piston travel is a little clearer. I then added some front wheels and a release lever, which locks onto the rear axle which when pressed down, lets the rear wheel spin and the dragster accelerate. Watching the piston slowly creep forwards as the pulley rotates to drive the rear wheels at a rapid pace is oddly satisfying in slow motion. All it needs now is a rear wing to complete the dragster look. But there's one thing missing, how can it be called a dragster without performing a burnout, even with wet tyres? I think it needs more power. So I built a version 2. This car has two syringes, which produce a forward force of 80 newtons each, which is equivalent to suspending a 16 kilogram weight from the small 3D printed axle, producing 0.76 newton meters of torque, which is transferred via a 1 to 5 belt ratio to produce 0.15 newton meters of torque at the rear wheels, which is a little too much for this tiny car, even with some assisted tire warming. With a lack of grip comes instability, as well as wasted energy, so it's difficult to set any record breaking times. However, I still find it fascinating that the weight of the air above us can be converted into usable forward motion by combining a syringe with a belt and pulley system. Whilst we're on the topic of mechanical advantage, I have this crate from KiwiCo, which demonstrates how cranes use mechanical advantage to lift heavy objects. Their crates provide everything required for assembly and are very well thought out. Like this one uses the packaging box as a sturdy base for the crane. These super cool hands-on projects are excellent for exposing kids to concepts in science, technology, engineering, art, and math, whilst also being engaging and fun. Each crate also includes clearly laid out build instructions, as well as an educational magazine which contains additional information behind the science involved in the project. For example, adding more pulleys can increase the mechanical advantage of the crane, allowing it to lift heavier objects. School has been a little different this year with the virtual classes, so KiwiCo's projects are a great hands-on activity to balance the overload of screen time. These crates can be delivered via subscription, or you can choose from a wide variety of projects by visiting the KiwiCo store. Viewers of my channel can get 20% off both subscriptions and anything in the KiwiCo store, by visiting kiwico.com forward slash Tom Stanton, which will be linked in the description down below. So thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video, 
And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other projects similar to this, then please click subscribe down below. And a massive, massive thanks to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these projects possible. I honestly couldn't do it without your support. So thanks once again. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.